brand new episode of Aspire. I'm Abha and we're coming to you this week from Cafe Zoe in Mumbai. Here's what's lined up for you on the show. We take a look at watches that go beyond just telling time. And we check out the HP Elite Pad, the new Windows tablet that's meant for business users. As they say, old is gold. We take a look at how vintage jewelry is making a comeback. But before we get to all of that, here's what's buzzing this week. Taking a departure from their classic approach to timepieces, Ulus Nade has taken a younger approach to design with its latest offering, the Night's Watch, inspired by the drama television series Game of Thrones. The Knight's watch features a 45.8 mm stainless steel case coated with matte black rubber, sapphire crystal case back, and the strap features the phrases "The Knight's Watch" and "I Am the Sword in the Darkness." Priced at $10,500, only 25 pieces of this one will be produced. The Mercedes A-Class is all set to launch in India. Stunning. Young and hip, Mercedes have got it all right with this luxury hatchback that isn't meant to be chauffeured around. With its modern interiors and its sporty driving dynamics, the Mercedes A-Class will appeal to young drivers. Also, with its affordable pricing that starts at 22 lakh rupees. Now, India has been known for its creative excellence when it comes to jewelry. There's so much history in this country that almost every piece you wear has a story to tell, and that's just what we're exploring today. Jewelry that takes inspiration from vintage collections and designs, but also makes a cut in the modern context. It's jewelry that will take you back in time to the era. The architecture, the design, and the lifestyle, crafted and recreated for the contemporary woman of today. You see the jewelry right now. What we are doing essentially is, besides the very modern and the very contemporary things which are available, we are also um, generating a bit of modern fusion using very old uh, ancient techniques and old ancient motifs. And I see this evolution moving most strongly towards a very important juxtaposition of the old and new. Uh, nothing new right now is thriving unless it's got a hint of old. Call it a movement in jewelry design that's making it exciting and invigorating. A great example of infusing the old with the new is Bina Goenka's recent collection that recreates Art Deco jewelry inspired by the 1920s. Famously labeled as the Jazz Age, the Roaring Twenties, or the Crazy Years, right after World War One, it was the era of the ultimate parties and extreme sense of fashion. A trend that's making a huge comeback with the release of Baz Luhrmann's The Great Gatsby. Who is this Gatsby? Art Deco means you know the designs are geometric. All the artists started you know going. Absolutely over the top in the work. That's what the collection is all about. It's all about color, all about uh, pearls, brooches, accessories. I've gone back into history in such a big way and taken that and put it together with the 1920 look, which today now India is in. They're actually enjoying that phase where they don't feel they are unabashed about looking good. Bina's 1920s collection has exquisite necklaces like this one called Cleopatra Revisited, to brooches, headbands, and clutch purses. One of them is this pearl look, which is pearl and gold. It's like pearl, gold, brooch, baroque. So pearls and the many forms that you can create out of it. You can wear it as a long chain. You can wear it shorter. You can wear it casually. You can make it, you know, put a brooch on it and make it more effective. Over here, there's something which is like a bracelet, and with that is a is a statement of a brooch, which is, you know, which you can wear. You can twist and turn it into any direction. So either you wear it over your shoulder, or you wear it around your neck, or you make a statement out of it. This 
itself is an is a hairband it's completely elastic completely stretchable with geometric circles and uh, obviously you can make out that it's complete geometry if those have transported you way back to the 20s already then here's another designer who draws inspiration from the art deco and victorian era renu mera carefully crafts her pieces to give you the best of both worlds the vintage victorian during that period there was um, the jewelry was lighter it was um, you know a lot of curves and curls in the pieces there were a lot of uh, motifs uh, floral patterns leaves i've done like a long necklace which is um, which was very uh, worn during the victorian era and during the art deco period i would call it there were a lot of uh, baguettes and emerald cuts and these kind of uh, shaped diamonds used during that era also and um, so that is one thing i've incorporated in that it's a long chain it has a large uh, pendant at the bottom what is nice and unique about it is that the pendant can be detached and it can be worn with a nice chunky chain But then Indian history itself has so much to offer to the world of jewelry an absolute mashup of the east and west Manisha Arora's collection for Amrapali reinvigorates techniques and motifs from Indian royalty Manisha's jewelry traverses across geographies from the Royal Bengal tiger roaring heavily atop bangles and rings to Tibetan antelopes echoing strong motifs in his gazelle collection of necklaces earrings and mong teakas there is a gold bangle which is giant size which has all these lots of spikes coming out which ends up with the heart and with heart studs in them it was taken from a old indian jewelry and we made it many sharora you know we made it into gold and we added hearts in them and made it into uh, pink and of course a uh, royal uh, bengal uh, tiger uh, how do you call the bracelet it is a, such a traditional design but that it was made into fluorescent pink and gold which was like combining manish arora and tradition together and then the opulence and grandeur of mogul jewelry has long influenced brands all over the world whether it be cartier or boucheron in the 1920s cartier created a magnificent seven strand diamond necklace for the maharaja of patiala using the king's historic pink canary and colorless diamonds and if you're smitten by the mogul era then head to maharani jewels in mumbai their signature the double strand rose cut drops necklace that evokes the passion and richness of old cut diamonds that were used in mogul times entrenched in 18 karat gold maharani designs vintage pieces that are reminiscent of the past yet very modern in their composition a lot of mogul period the beautiful designs of the mogul motifs not necessary from jewelry architecture or sculptures or all indian motifs classical motifs but you see we just can't reproduce exactly the same for the contemporary women so what we like to do we like to combine it with the contemporary sensibilities meaning which that we try and use different stones old stones mix them with the fully cut stones with the colored stones to create a complete different look if i would not to tell a client it's old they wouldn't know that it's in, it's not an old piece i mean that origin we can make it look like that that's where affordability comes in an important point that neena makes about the pricing of raw material that has gone up phenomenally those are very very heavy pieces and as the time has evolved the prices have become more expensive you can't use such they were they had beautiful stones like you could use diamonds of this size which are not available and if they are they are expensive very very expensive. they set a lot of things in the silver and platinum though we do use platinum a lot now but not many people are using silver because the gold is considered the more precious metal where on one hand the maharani's were draped in strands of diamonds and gems on the other were the hyderabadi begums who'd live in a restricted environment as if they'd been bound by shackles Suhani Petty's Grunge Begum collection represents an interesting infusion of constraint and freedom inspired heavily by the Nizam era. That is 
very exciting piece that we created. Um, they were these very old uh, Finnish patina chains that we used to represent shackles. But in them we put these beautifully in, intricate, uh, intricately done jhumkas. Uh, now the whole idea, the whole story behind this was that the jhumkas represent freedom, they represent sound. But at the same time they were all bound by those shackles which were those patina chains. The other representation that we did was, um, if you see the zippers, it's a black zipper which comes down like a heart. The zipper again shows a closure, a, a restraint. So there was a motif with the uncut crystals and within that, there was a little uh, Lakshmi Ji's uh, motif done within that. So it represented three very important moods. One where you're talking about restraint, then you're talking about wealth and you're talking about luxury, but all of them put together. The idea really is to draw multiple wear out of your jewellery, especially for working women like me who would want to flaunt a piece of history without feeling overdone. And well, these Victorian earrings do exactly that for me. They create a dialogue of their own, something that Indian brands haven't really managed to do over time. They haven't moved beyond the single diamond or pendant kind of designs. Well then, it's time for you to become part of the era gone by and let your jewellery speak for you. Ladies in the royal era managed to look so regal with those long strings of rubies, diamonds, pearls. Who wouldn't want to wear something like that even today? We take a very quick break here on Aspire. When we come back, we take a look at watches that go beyond just selling time. And we also take a look at the all-new HP Elite Pad.